Hiya friends, prepared some bourbonite back at you. Um, my wife has a uh, clever little saying that she uh, uses uh, from time to time. In fact, whenever I complain about um, uh, shoulder pain or a little bit of twinge in my back or my uh, hands uh, uh, are cramped up because of a little arthritis in there, and she's got a, a cute little saying that she uh, uses to <laughs> diffuse my complaints. And she says, wait till next year. You see, she's nine months older than I am. So once we reached 70, um, and now I'm 71 and she is 72, um, and our ages are different by about nine months. Um, she keeps saying, wait till next year, assuming that she's already been through all the same aches and pains that I have, and that she's just saying, you wait till next year. But there's a whole lot more to this, and let me get into some detail right after the intro. So we've been married for uh, well over 50 years now, 51, uh, yeah, 51 years in November, last November, and uh, um, this new saying just happened to come along once uh, we received, once we reached about 70 years of age, and uh, I find it humorous. We use it as kind of a, a running joke between us back and forth, and uh, I, uh, <laughs> I truly think that um, there's a lot of wisdom in that little saying. And as I look ahead till next year, um, wait till next year is really the theme of uh, what I want to talk about. There's a, a critical, absolutely critical time in our um, life cycle here in the United States of America. And it uh, comes along every four years and it's uh, called an election year. And uh, I am very concerned as I look toward next year and uh, my wife will say, wait till next year. And there's an ominous tone to what uh, can come out of that. There's uh, Two major candidates as it stands right now. Who knows um, what the next few months is going to bring, but right now um, you got Joe Biden and you got Donald Trump. And yeah, Trump's got to wind his way through the primaries and um, all that. He's got to avoid all the uh, uh, made up accusations and baloney that they've uh, been chasing him around with. Uh, but I suspect that given his level of popular support, that he will be the uh, Republican nominee for president. So now we've got a rematch of 2020 that's going to happen in 2024, barring any weird stuff that goes on. Is there election interference going on? Absolutely. Uh, you can't convince me otherwise. Uh, what just happened in Colorado, what's been going on with this Jack Smith guy, uh, what's going on in uh, New York, and in Georgia, um, it's just um, uh, absolutely crazy. And the, the whole Mar-a-Lago thing with uh, the raid there and the, uh, the presidential uh, papers and uh, all that. Um, I can't remember the count now, but it seems like there was 91 individual counts that could put Trump behind bars for... 700 plus years or something. It's it's just absolutely crazy. This is election interference and you're witnessing it right now. And don't let anybody try to tell you any different and wait till next year because I suspect it's going to get even worse. Um, I have no idea what the Supreme Court's going to do with the challenge to the Colorado Supreme Court ruling that Trump can't be on their ballot. Um, there's a couple of theories that are out there. 
I'm not quite sure which one's going to prevail, but but to say that their last ditch efforts got to be the Supreme Court really uh, after my last video, um, I've there's some fundamental things wrong going on in our country right now that we need to address. Looking forward, not forward, but looking toward next year, and we'll wait till next year, we've got obviously the election. We've got a potential uh, internal uh, USA civil war that's um, about to uh, engage itself. I think, and I suspect highly, that no matter which of the two candidates wins the election, according to the uh, fairly applied rules that are out there, that there will be um, all kinds of disruptions in the uh, uh, in the country, whether it would uh, it, whether it's going to mirror what happened in 2020 with the uh, with the riots and the burning of the buildings and the takeover of federal courthouses and all that, or if it's going to manifest itself like the January 6 uh, debacle that uh, uh, is out there that. Uh, that all the liberals and the, the lefties are um, trying to blame on Trump and all us uh, uh, right-wing uh, lunatics out here. Um, there will be a, uh, a potential for internal civil war right here in this country of ours. Um, I wouldn't put it past them. We've got the potential for World War III. Um, Russia's in Ukraine right now. China's threatening to uh, uh, re-annex or take over Taiwan. Uh, we've got um, uh, Kim Jong-un rattling his sabers over there again, shooting missiles around. Uh, it, it's pretty scary. Um, and, and then what's going on with Israel and Gaza and Hamas and the whole uh, Arab world out there. It's a powder keg and our current administration is doing nothing but throwing matches at it right now. They haven't done a thing to try to tamp any of it down. They don't seem to be uh, inclined to hold anybody accountable for anything that's really going on and they like to just throw money at stuff and uh, those are my tax dollars too and I think Ukraine's had enough money. I think uh, we need to be very concerned about what's going on in our own country first. We've got uh, the threats of the uh, Great Reset, um, the um, Klaus Schwab's of the world, um, the Economic Forum, the World Economic Forum, uh, Central Bank Digital Currencies, um, it's a tyrannical reproach, approach to uh, um, the, the solution to all our problems. What this is, is, is socialism and communism all bundled up in a fancy little package where those in power are going to tell us what we can do, where we can spend our money, what appliances we can use, what uh, fuel we need to have for our vehicles, where we can go, 15-minute cities. Um, it's uh, wait till next year and see what happens. Oh yeah, we've got a lot of things to be concerned about. Uh, inflation. Um, a little bit of good news this morning that... Uh, the uh, uh, preferred measure of the <laughs> economy ticked down. That means inflation actually went down by 0.1% month over month. Well, it doesn't mean the prices that we pay at the pump or the prices that we pay at the uh, cash register in the grocery store are going to be dropping uh, as precipitously as this 0.1%. But I think inflation will be with us for uh, the foreseeable future 
and I'm talking uh, at least next year. We got the continuing mess at the border. I'm going to call it a crisis. Um, the current administration has absolutely fallen down in its responsibilities for uh, securing our border, keeping our people safe, and that's supposed to be the function of the federal government. And because they're not doing it, you've got uh, the governors of those border states um, trying to take on the responsibility of their own, and the feds are taking them to task every which way but loose. And our uh, fearless and uh, very articulate vice president, um, um, in her word salad responses to all this, um, has not even uh, begun to solve any of the problems that she was put in charge of as the border czar. So she gets a failing grade for me. The continuing uh, uh, issues with anti-Semitism, the cultural divisions in this country, the racial divisions in this country, uh, secularism, the uh, our, our morale, our values are being eroded uh, by by the the secular uh, left, and I, I'm very concerned about. <clears throat> the long-term impact of how all well this is going to be. So we'll find out next year. Wait till next year. Yeah, we've got issues with uh, global warming. We've got issues with climate change. Um, or at least there is uh, a lot of people saying we've got all these problems with global warming, climate change. I haven't really seen or felt anything that tells me that we are in the midst of an existential um, threat to our uh, well-being here on this planet. The solutions that they're being proposed right now are nothing but uh, tyrannical communism, and uh, I'm very concerned about what's going to happen as we wait Till next year. So let me wrap up with uh, just a couple final thoughts. Yeah, the uh, future does not look all bright and warm and full of rainbows and unicorns. There is an awful lot going on in this country and in this world right now that should give us all um, a reason to pause and think and take action. And I mean take action. I, I, what I mean is be prepared. Be prepared for what's, uh, what the possibilities are going to be or what could possibly come of it. If we end up in a civil war, if we end up in World War III, if we end up with an economic uh, uh, collapse of some sort where the stock market tanks and the uh, real estate values go to hell, um, we are... Uh, we, we are going to be challenged ourselves to be able to make it to the other side, to get through the worst of this. So I implore um, all my viewers, uh, all my people to examine where you are with your preps. Take a big inventory uh, over the holidays here. Fill in the gaps. Make sure you've got enough food for your, your, your family, your kids. Um, and and it, it's going to last you for at least six months to a year. Wait till next year, and then we'll see uh, how it's going to be. Make sure you've got everything you need to survive. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see you all on the next video. Oh, and by the way, Merry Christmas.